We are here for our fourth session on that particular poem, Aunt Jennifer's Tigers. It might be a question in your mind that already we have ended our sessions. It means that we have completed three stanzas, mainly the body of the poem. Then why is this next session? Why is it meant for? To be very frank and simple, in this session, I'm trying to take you, drag you to a different level of signification or interpretation of the poem. In the first three stanzas, I have given, rather, I have explained what is patriarchy, what is feminism, what's the present scenario, this and that. Ultimately, we have to understand by giving a context, what's the relevance? Fen I told that feminism is a recent phenomenon. It's a recent phenomenon in the second half of 20th century. So therefore, I'm trying to relate your mind. If it is present phenomenon, so the problem is very recent or the problem is undergoing ages after ages. So that is what we have to ask. Feminism, even though it is termed right now, it's a movement right now, but it started long before. At that point of time, we did not know that this is feminism. If I take two names, perhaps you'll be able to understand that, okay, these two people or these two great humanists or personalities, they are related to feminism. Could you guess? Definitely, I'm trying to talk about Ishwar Chandra Bidyashagar and Ramon Rai. And these two humanists, they have done a great job for women. Now you have to understand that even though it started long back, they did not, there is no effect of that. And ultimately we have reached to that situation where things are very, very wretched, dilapidated. Rather it reeks at this situation. We have to stop it. So I will start with a quotation before I go into that. Here actually in this session, I'm trying to drag you before that I have already mentioned that I'm trying to drag you to a different level of interpretation. Already I have interpreted the poem. We have some illustrations, but we have to contextualize. Few students, rather few people might think that the poem is done. It's complete. We have understood it. Then why is this important? But I have a simple answer, very, very, very decent answer that this poem is written from the perspective of American society. But we are not in America. We are in Indian situation. So therefore, we have to understand this from the perspective of Indian condition, from the tradition of India, from the perspective of the culture of India. Because culturally, traditionally, India is totally different from other countries, rather the entire world. So from that perspective, we have to pinpoint our poem. And it's true. Suppose, if, 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 to make you understand, I can give you a simple example. Suppose a poem is based on heroism. It's all about Nelson Mandela. If there is no close association with Nelson Mandela, we have to understand from the perspective of our great heroes, maybe Khudiram, maybe Netaji, maybe Gandhiji, it's your choice. But even though the poem is written, it is fully composed. Rather, it's, a, it, it's, it's all about Nelson Mandela and his contribution for his own country. But we are not going to this, do this because we are trying to understand from the perspective of our heroes. That's literature, it's connection. So literature is meant only to connect, only to connect. It is mentioned in one of the novels by E.M. Forster. If you read that novel, it is Howard's End. The first line is only to connect. So it's the task of literature only to connect the souls. And what souls? Sensitive souls. Those souls who can sympathize, empathize, realize, discern. They do not demonstrate. They do not try to dominate because if you show the power of domination, it's not going to be a sensitive feeling. It's not going to be an empathetic approach towards life. So that is what I'm trying to suggest here. 
So I'm writing three words. Perhaps you know these things. I'm writing in Bangla. Sorry, I don't have any board, whiteboard, so there is going to be a little bit problem. I think you can see it. I've written three words. I'm repeating for your help or advantage. First, I have written Ballo Bibaho. Second, I have talked about Shoti Daho Protha. And third, I have talked about Pon Protha. Sorry, here is a spelling mistake. It's Protha. Ballo Bibaho, Shoti Daho Protha and Pon Protha. All these three are related to women. Think, is it right or wrong? All these three. You have already read in history because it's a class of 12. So definitely in 9 and 10, you have already read these portions. So all these three concepts, rather movements, rather pathetic conditions are related to women. Ballo Bibao, is it related to man? Shoti Daho Pratha, is it related to man? Pon Pratha, is it related to man? No. So we have to think, even though we are talking about feminism, and I, I have already traced this, that sometimes we make fun with feminism, the words like feminism, feminists. A man who is talking about women, sometimes we prick. We poke that person that, okay, feminist. He's a feminist. We make tone like this, but we have to understand that definitely, if this is a condition, then this condition will never be mended and if it is not mended then society can reach to its pinnacle of success think about it ballo bibaho shoti daho protha when the husband dies that lady has no right to live in this world she has to leave why what's the problem the counter question can be if the woman dies, can and can anybody burn the husband? No, it's not possible. Pawn Pratha, if you want to get married, especially I'm talking in terms of a daughter, you have to pay it. You have to pay it, it, it is money. Perhaps you have read the famous story of Rabindranath Tagore where Nirupama is a victim of this Pon Protha. So these are the massacre. So women is a constant victim of patriarchal society. Now again I will ask this burning question because you are really bubbling with present ideas, opinions, thoughts, because you have the very technical mind. You are very sound. You are not prejudiced. So therefore, I'm giving you this option. Think properly. Why is this happening? I'm not a feminist in that way. But if I, if I, po if I pose these questions, will you be able to answer those questions? Husband. He is a member of patriarchal society. He is the head of the family. He is going to be the head of the family. Is he crippled? Is he paralyzed that he needs money to get married? If he cannot take the responsibility of a woman, then why is he going for marriage? Question comes. Question comes. You have to ask this question. So dowry is going to be a huge problem. There is a piece by, written by Manikuntala Sen and in that particular story of Manikuntala Sen, she has described that when that lady on the day of marriage, when she comes to know that there is a huge commotion going on on the day of marriage, definitely she committed suicide. And this is not one case. If you survey the history, then definitely you will, you will get a history. A full complete diary will be over with the names. Those women who have committed suicide because of these many problems. 
So the question comes, being ahead, if you cannot take the responsibility, how can you catch hold of right, the R-I-G-H-T? So therefore, I will pose a question, rather quotation. If you think that you need rights, before that you have to be right. So if you are right, then you can claim for rights. Adhikar. So if you are not right, you cannot claim for that. So it's meant for all. It's not meant for only men or patriarchal society. It's meant for everybody. That if you if you think, because we are nowadays we are talking about Manobit Manobadikar Commission, this and that. So you have to think like this: that if you, are you right, are you doing the right thing? Then only you claim for rights. Otherwise, there is no option. That is what I'm asking. So these things, those three things that I have mentioned over here, these things are not present. It took place long before. Right now we are talking about feminism, gender studies, this and that. But after all, it started long back. Still, there is no solution. Therefore, these people have come up with these ideas that they need to have equal right. Now. Equality is again in question mark. Equality is not scientific. It's not fact. It is also a fictional term. Does it sound very abnormal? Yes. It is a fictional term. It is a concept. It changes. It waves. Think about it. I'm giving a story. When Gandhiji went to South Africa, he boarded a train of first class. He had the ticket, but somehow he was thrown away from that compartment because there was a notion in South Africa that only fair skin, fair complexion people can board that first class. And Gandhiji fought against them that I had the ticket. I'm an eligible passenger to get into that compartment, but still I'm thrown away. And Gandhiji fought back. So is it justice or is it revenge? So when Gandhiji is trying to take a revenge, he wants right. He wants to have a question. He puts a question in front. Is it a rule or is it a mockery of rule? Because if you have that ticket with you, you are an eligible candidate. You can board without any, any permission. Because you have the ticket, ticket shows that you are eligible. But they have a different notion that if you are not fair complexion, if you are black complexion, complexion, then definitely you have no entry over that, there. So Gandhiji was thwarted. So therefore, Gandhiji has protested. Now question comes, definitely it's a question of equality. But the question comes when Gandhiji has protested, is it justice or is it revenge? Question comes over here. Think critically. We have to think it. So equality is also in question mark. Again, I'm giving a simple example about equality. Equality is also not possible. Suppose somebody has stolen a pen and somebody has stolen an earring. Gold earring. So in both the cases, it's stolen case. It's a matter of stealing. Is it going to be the same punishment? Think about it. A student from your school, he has stolen a pen from a fellow student and a, and a thief has stolen a mobile phone from your house. Is it going to be the same punishment? Now the question comes, if it is a case of stealing, the punishment should be the same, but it's not happening. This is one example. Another example I'm giving you. A boy of five years, he has stolen one chocolate from your pocket. And one boy has stolen, a same year, has stolen money from your pocket. How could you exemplify these two incidents? In first case, you will tell that this is a case of innocence. And in the first, second case, you will tell this is an accident. Accident in the sense that even though that boy is of five years, definitely he had that maturity, therefore he has stolen money. 
So he is very money minded. But the first boy, he had done it very innocently. Again, rational is going to be different. So where is the question of equality? If you become the judge, what kind of punishment you will take? Think about it. So what's the point is that the moment we are trying to talk about equality, we have to think about our responsibilities. That's the only thing. Again, I'm repeating the same thing that if you talk about equal rights, you have to think about equal responsibilities. Should I repeat? If you think about equal rights, you have to talk about equal responsibilities. Without responsibilities, you cannot be right. So righteousness, the pronunciation is righteousness, not righteousness. It's wrong pronunciation. So righteousness comes when you are right. And then only you can claim rights. So these are very complicated and complex issues. You have to think because you are scientific. You are bubbling with 20th century knowledge. So you are not orthodox. You are not stereotypical in your mindset. So you have to think. So even though the poem is done, these issues are giving a threat to all of us, especially if you are a sensitive reader. Emotional riddle. Because a poem is just a medium through which you are looking the world. It's, it's always about telescope. When you are looking through a telescope, you are not looking into the telescope. You are not looking into the instruments or the parts and parcel of that telescope. Because it's a medium through which you are looking the world. Definitely, you have to experiment with a telescope if you want to see, if you want to have an experiment, if you, if you want to have real validation, evaluation, assessment of the world. Because which button works properly, which button you have to press during this time. So these are the experiments that you have to make before you utilize. So if you, if you want to bring that telescope into utilization, you have to have an experiment, you have to have a knowledge before that. This is precursory knowledge. But ultimately, telescope is not your ex point of experiment. You are looking through the world. Similarly, just like this, even though it is pre prescribed in your syllabus, you are exam oriented because you need to get marks. Next year, you have to submit your certificates to, to, to a higher authority or institution. I know these things, but I think this poem is actually a telescope through which you can see the world. It shows a view of the world. I can talk about so many things. It talks about mythology, where there is two things. Shorpadishti, Guru Rudrishti. Guru Rudrishti talks about long, wide perspective. Shorpadishti talks about limited perspective. So why, why are you going to be limited? So if it is knowledge, knowledge has to be limitless. That is what we are trying to do. We are trying to find out a relevance. We are standing in the 21st century. What's the condition? What's the evaluation? What's the status? Is it change or is it same? Is it going to continue for the next 50 years, 100 years? We have to evaluate. We have to judge. And all the time, it's not that right and wrong, right and wrong, balance. Because technically there is a word called balance shit. Now you have to, being a responsible family member, you have to talk about one balance sheet. If there are four members, everybody is sharing 25% task of the family so that there is an equal proportion in the family and the family runs well. Why is it the expectation that always mom will cook? If you're free, you can also cook. Simple example. It's not so serious. Take it. It, it, it should not be an expectation that if I reach, if I enter, mom will do everything for me. Mother does everything. That's a different thing. It's a different emotional connection. If she does it, she does it because of her responsibility. But you have some responsibilities to offer, to revert back. So these are the questions that... that I'm trying my best to dig into your mind so that you can think like this. 
and you can you can bring an end of these problems complexities contradictions abnormalities imbalances in the society so dowry system is going to be a huge problem and other three problems other two problems are already mitigated already mitigated and the third thing that i'm going to talk about is the family family is everybody's property there should be everybody's share it's not your mother mother's family it's not your father's family apostrophe as i'm talking about if you are a member of family again i already repeated this again i'm sharing the same idea that everybody should focus on their responsibilities if you do not be, if you, if you if you cannot be responsible then nothing can be done in your life so that is what adrian rich is trying to make a question that is and if you take the word husband this is for your extra knowledge husband is actually a compound word compound word it becomes like this h u s plus band h u s is actually a short form of house and band here actually talks about bound somebody who stays at home so home bound rather we should be bound by not by patriarchal society not by power but by a feeling of love meaningful relationship that should be our aim and dream of the society so that we can have a fruitful life meaningful life sound life sweet life otherwise in life everything appears to be meaningless docile so with this perspective i have already mentioned this that this is going to be a further level of signification we are trying to reach to a different level of signification therefore you be a sensible reader think about the perspectives i am not trying to show you that if you have to be like this i am i am actually providing you different options i am providing you different options because a man has both divine qualities and the qualities of a beast it's your choice whether you are going to on the side of you are going to select divine qualities or the qualities of a beast animal it's your choice so i am giving you so many options with those options you select one and follow it throughout your life so that it's going to be a meaningful relationship and life as well thank you very much these four sessions are meant for only one poem please go through several times if you face any problem same suggestion you jot down those questions definitely we will solve those questions whenever time comes thank you very much